Hello everyone, it's Benny, and this video is going to be all about the input. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create an input class. I'm going to right click on my engine, just create a new class for input. I'm going to call it input. And to start off our user input system, I'm going to create a very basic method. It's going to be public boolean called get key. And it's going to take in some int for, oops, the code of the key. Because, I don't know if you know this, but whenever you press a key on your keyboard, it sends a specific number for, and that's the key code for whatever key you hit. And that's how your computer tells you you're hitting A and not Z, or so forth and so on. And fortunately, implementing this method is pretty easy, because the Lightweight Java Game Library provides a class that does some similar stuff to this. So I'm going to return keyboard.isKeyDown, and I'm just going to pass in the key code. Now, in this, that case, it's pretty simple, but our next few methods won't quite be as easy. It's going to be public boolean get key down, and this method is supposed to be true for precisely one frame and one frame only. When a key is pressed down, and if it's held down, it doesn't keep staying true, only the frame that is pressed down. So, it's also going to take in a key code, and Here's how I'm going to do this. First off, to determine when a frame happens, I'm going to have this public method, not a pubic method, a public method, called update. And I'm just going to call this method every frame in our main engine loop. So I'm just going to scroll down to where we're getting input, and right below where we set delta, I'm just going to do input.update. Oh, and I should make this stuff static, because it's going to be a static class. So go ahead and make everything static. And yeah. And this is how... I'll just return false for now. This is how I'm going to determine... Hey, guess what? We're at our next frame. If you still have the key down, don't keep saying it's down anymore. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have an array list. It's going to be a private array list of integers. I'm going to call it current keys. And yeah, I can just go ahead and initialize it here. Why not? And if I import, I'm also going to have a constant. So public static final int. I'm going to call it num key codes. And that's going to be 256. I'm going to say there's 256 key codes, which should be true for a standard ASCII keyboard, but hey, if you want some extra fancy thing that incorporates a whole bunch, you might consider setting this to 65,535, but I'm just going to stick to this for now. So, now here's what I'm going to do. Every frame, first off, I'm going to take current keys and I said I'm going to take current key, oh right, private static array list, and I'm going to clear it. So just get rid of all the current keys that are down. And then I'm going to do for loop. I'm going to loop for every single key, so i is less than key codes, and I'm going to do a test. I'm going to say if that key is down, if we're pressing that key, then we're going to add it. We're going to add that key code. So that's essentially the whole point of this. It's just going to keep track of every single key that's down. Well, yeah, every single key that's pressed in a single frame. So, but I'm not going to use it like this. I'm actually going to do all my code above this. I'm going to be relying on the code for the previous frame. And here's why. I'm going to create a second array list. I'm going to call it down keys. This is going to keep track of every single key that's pressed in a single frame. And this is how I'm going to detect that, because I'm going to go through every single key code, and if the key is being pressed, and the key wasn't pressed in the, the um, previous frame, then I know that key must have just been pressed this frame. So. I'll go ahead and add that. And of course, down keys dot clear first off. 
And this shouldn't be a problem since there's really never going to be that many keys in here unless you just keep slamming your keyboard down for some reason. And that ultimately completes how the get key down method is handled. If down keys dot contain, so it, if the key code is in this big list of every single key that was pressed in the frame, then return true. Otherwise, return false. Problem solved. And I'm going to do something similar for get key up, method that should only return true if all the key, well, if the key is released. So I'm going to end up creating a similar list. It's pretty much going to be the exact same type of thing, except it's going to be a list of all keys that are pulled up rather than all the keys that are pushed down. So I'm going to create another array list. It's going to be of all the up keys. And of course, at the start, I'm going to do up keys dot clear. And I'm going to do a big similar list. But I'm going to reverse conditions. If the key was pressed in the current frame, so if current keys dot contains i, and we're not pressing the key anymore, then obviously, the, well, maybe not obviously, but if that's the case, then we must have released the key that frame. So there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go in my game class and, and go ahead and do some test code. If input dot get key down, and I'm just going to use the language of a game library's keyboard class for the key codes, just really quick, I'll do key up, so the up arrow. Then I'm going to go ahead and print out. We've just pressed up. And I'm going to do something similar, except I'm going to say get key up. Then I'm going to see here we just released up. So now if I run and press the up arrow, then hey, we just pressed up and I'm still holding it down. Now if I release it, we've just released up. So I can just keep pressing and releasing and it's working absolutely beautifully. So there you go. That's our basic keyboard input system. Now, this example I just showed might not work for you because language of a game library's keyboard class, which my whole input system is sort of based around, it requires being initialized. So I think the best place to do that is where I create a window. So here I'm just going to do keyboard.create. And, spoiler alert, I'm also going to create the mouse here, because guess what? We're going to be doing the mouse next. So, I'm going to go ahead and import keyboard. And, okay, it's already imported mouse. And dispose method, I'm going to go do keyboard.destroy and mouse.destroy. And, there you go. That completes the, well, initialization of keyboard and mouse. Next is just to actually implement all the keyboard and mouse methods. So I'm just going to end up creating very similar methods for the mouse. I'm going to create public static boolean called get mouse int mouse button, and this is just going to return mouse dot is button down mouse button. And there you go, that's straightforward enough. However, I'm also going to have a public static boolean get mouse button, wait, no, get mouse down int mouse button, which is going to function sort of like the get key down method. And I'm going to sort of go with the same approach here. I'm going to create a list of integers called, I'll call it down mouse and up mouse. So here I'm just going to return down. Actually, yeah, why, why didn't I just do that? I can return if down mouse dot contains mouse button. I can just do that here. I don't know why I didn't do that. So I guess I'll go ahead and change that. So just return that. There you go. Much, much easier. I have no idea why I never thought of that. Oh well. Well, I thought of it now. So there you go. Down keys. Just need one final thing, get mouse up. So get mouse up. It's gonna return if up mouse dot contains the mouse button. 
And actually, just really quick, I'm gonna see if my thing still works with the code, cause... Yep. Appears to be working. Okay, cool. Yeah, not sure why I never did that, but hey. So, first off, I'm gonna need current mouse, just like before. And at the end of every frame, I'll why not? I'll do it after this. Do current mouse dot clear. And then four and i equals zero, i is less than, and I can create a public static final int called dumb mouse buttons. And I don't know how many buttons your mouse has. I'm just gonna set this to five, cause I really don't think it's reasonable to pr program code for more than five mouse buttons, but hey. Because, I mean, even then, five button mice aren't even that common, but, eh. Oh well. So now, if get mouse, I, then current mouse dot add I, and it's pretty much the same algorithm. So, yeah. Up mouse dot clear. In fact, I can pretty much just copy and paste this and replace key with mouse, and it's going to work. If current mouse, up mouse, and need to change that to num mouse buttons. Okay? And one final time for down mouse. And flip these around, so if get mouse and not current mouse, then down mouse dot add. Okay, so that completes mouse input, assuming it works. So, I'm gonna copy these, and I'm gonna change it to... First off, I'm gonna change this to 1, so this should be detecting the right click. And I'm gonna change it to get mouse down. And get mouse up. We've just... Yeah, we've just right clicked, we've just released right mouse button. Sure, there we go. That works. So now we just right clicked, and release. There we go. So cool. Now the final thing I want in my input class is some way to get the current position of the mouse. So I'm gonna go to my input class, create public static, gonna be vector2f, which is a class I don't have yet, but that's okay. It's going to be called get mouse position. It's going to return a new vector 2f. Don't worry, I'm about to create it. Which is going to contain mouse.getx and mouse.gety. And don't worry about that. I'm going to talk all about vectors in the next video. So I'm going to create a new class for the vector 2f, which is going to mostly be a wrapper class for now. And it's going to have private float x private float y public vector 2f float x float y and if I can type correctly this dot x is x this dot y is y and I can go ahead and generate setters getters and setters for this so I'm gonna just click generate getters and setters because you should know how to do that and there only other thing is I want a two string method just to show it off. So that's just going to return parenthesis plus x plus space plus y and then closing parenthesis. There. That is my wrapper class. I'll talk all about vectors and how they work in the next video. So I'm going to change our right click thing to just we right clicked at plus input dot get mouse position dot to string. And if I run, I can open this up and I can right click all over the place. And it tells me where to right click. So cool. And if you're really bored, you can try to right click at exactly 0, 0. But I'm not going to do that. So, anyways, thank you. Hope you enjoyed. And this concludes the core engine mechanics section. In the next video, we're going to be talking all about not engine mechanics, but the math facility, like vectors and matrices and quaternions. So, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.